Hey everyone, welcome to another real estate photography shoot. This time we're gonna do a living room that bleeds off into a dining room. So I'm gonna walk you around and, and show you what we're gonna be dealing with. And uh, then after we take the photos, we're going to edit them. So let's get started. All right, so this is the view that we're going to, to do. I'm probably gonna frame it somewhat like this, getting that wall to the right, catching it right where it ends. So the things we have to contend with will be that window, the far side. Now we do need to get our flash a lot further than normal, especially over there to the back right. So I'm gonna show you my lighting setup. One, I'm gonna be taking the photo from here. So I'm gonna be using a big flash full power I'm going to be bouncing it off of this ceiling. You can see the way the ceiling is designed. That's going to work in our favor. The light will bounce up and then come back this way. Now, what I'm also going to do is, and I already have the flash there, I'm swinging around this way. You can see the flash in the middle of the kitchen. So what that's going to do, it's going to bounce the flash off the ceiling again. And because of the angle of the ceiling, it should rain it down over this way. However, there will be more light. I'm also going to take a uh, shoot through umbrella and I'm going to be shooting from over there and I'm going to be shooting through the umbrella this direction in order to fill in any space that the other two flashes aren't covering. And I'm also going to make sure that we have a good window pull uh, right there and uh, we're going to get started now. So first thing first, Let's always get our composition nailed in. Always want you to know what I'm looking at exactly. And I'm going to set a focal point. I'm just going to use the window. So I'm going to do spot focus on that window. And right now my settings are f-stop 7.1, ISO 320 to make my flashes more powerful. And the shutter speed, I do not know yet. My guess will probably be 160 because that is a good sync speed for my camera to the flashes and then we'll have to deal with the window separately. So here we go. All right, here we go. We're doing shot number one. Go ahead and aim the umbrella. And there goes our first one. From what I can see with no glasses on, it looks fairly decent. I'm going to turn up the power of the umbrella. So I have several to pick from. And now I think I need one with a little less flash right beside me. This is on an eighth power here. I'm going to knock it down to a sixteenth. This is on a half power, knock it down to a fourth. Okay, good. And then the next thing I'm going to do is crank down, or excuse me, we'll do the uh, shutter speed crank it down. It's already maxed out, so let me take the ISO, bring it down to 100, detain that window down just a little bit, and take one more shot of it. Actually, I'm going to brighten that up a little bit more so I can do my window pull. Not going to be much of a scene out there. The sun is blazing right in that window. Um, we would really have to do some work to make that a decent shot outside of the window. And to be quite honest, there's absolutely no view, so I'm not too worried about it. So now that we got our photos, let's go ahead and get these in Photoshop and get this done. Okay, I have the photos loaded in right now to Adobe Raw. So this is uh, one, these are the ones that I picked from the photos I took. This one, uh, because the ceiling looks really good. Uh, the next one, eh, it's, it's well lit on the inside. Next one's a little bit darker. And this one's a lot darker. And then we have a, the window shot that I'm going to use right there. So first thing I'm going to do is click the top one, hit Command A or Control A if you're on a PC. To select all the photos, go over here and apply my presets, uh, and that's basically sharpening and uh, lens it, correction for lens distortion and chromatic aberration. I do have a video called Actions and Presets. If you want to know what my presets and, or my actions are in Photoshop, just go to that video and you can find that information there. So I applied those changes to all of them. Now I'm going to open up the photos into Photoshop and blend together the photos until I have what I need. All right, I've got the photos loaded into Photoshop. I'm looking at the last photo now. I'm gonna go over here to my actions and apply my sharpen to all of the images. So I'm gonna click on that, file, automate, 
batch because I'm applying this to all of them and I'm going to run my sharpen there. Again, you can find the details in my other video for actions and presets. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go start with my first photo here. Um, and I'm going to use that another time. I'm going to start off with a brighter photo. I'm going to hit Command A, Command C, Control if you're on a PC. I'm going to go to the first photo now and hit Command V and uh, paste that there. I'm going to make a mask. So now I've got one photo on top of the other. So this is the top, there's the bottom. And you can see what aspect I'm going to be using is that uh, ceiling where I don't have that annoying ceiling fan shadow. So next thing I'm going to do now that I have a mask and it's white is I'm going to use the brush tool, paint with black, uh, pick my opacity. I'm going to just pick it some random one, but we'll make it 25 for right now. So then what I want to do is brush in that bottom layer. And you might be going, well, that looks like crap. And I would agree with you. What I'm going to do is go to the background layer, which is the bottom one that we're revealing. And I'm going to go to adjustment layer. I'm going to go to brightness and I'm going to bring up the brightness until it matches the other photo. Let's see if I go too far just so you can see what I'm doing. That's what it would look like. So just do your best guesstimate on where to leave it somewhere right around there. All right, so that's, I think that's all I need from that photo. Let's see, before, it's the top layer, bottom layer, top, bottom, aha. Notice this shadow right over here uh, from the countertop. I'm definitely bringing that in. So let me bring the opacity down a little bit more, maybe 12%, and bring in, whoops, I'm, all, I'm still on the, I'm on the brightness layer. Go to the mask layer, try that again and I can get rid of that shadow. So, two helpful things I could get from that other photo. Just by moving the flash around, you can move the shadows around, and then you can pick and choose from each photo what you need. Actually, I'm gonna raise that brightness just a tad more. There. All right, now, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this image. Command A, Command C. I'm gonna to go to the third image now and see if there's anything from that photo, Command V. See if there's anything from that photo, make a mask that I need. Top, bottom, top, bottom. All right, top, this is a little bright right here, closest to the camera. The bottom one is a little bit darker, so I'm gonna use that. So I've got the mask, got the brush, going with black. Let's raise this to, I don't know, 38. Sounds like a great number. And bring that in just to darken closer to the camera there so it doesn't look so flashy. All right, let's see if there's any other aspect I can use. All right, this little corner right here. Okay, so this is the top and this is the other one. I'm gonna bring in, just darken that just a tad. Bring this down, the brush down to 17. Come in here and just slightly, under, or we call it darken that just a tad. Let me take a look at anything else. No. For my taste, there's really nothing else I would use for that. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. See, Command A, Command C, Command V. Is there anything I need in this photo? Okay, a lot darker right here. Let's make a mask and just get a little bit darker there. 17 should be fine. For the opacity, make that a little bit less bright right by the camera. And if, by the way, if I didn't like that, I could just go right back here to history and take off those two brushes, go right back where I was before, which I want to do anyway. And I'm going to go use a brush with a lower opacity, maybe 12%, and bring that in because I just want it a little bit darker. All right, so I think we're down to the very end. The last one is the window shot. So I'm going to go ahead and Command A, C, and Command V on top of what we just did. I'm going to run my window pull action. Now the mask is black and it's in darken mode take uh, the brush and paint with white in this case i'm gonna say this one more time though if you want to know what that action was for the window pull it's in the action and preset video all right now i'm going to go and apply this to that window so it will be to where we could see out of it okay it's not perfectly dark in there but it's good enough i kind of like it so i'm going to go ahead and flatten this image Okay, I deleted the other photos and we're just down to the one I was working with. 
Now I'm going to open this up in Adobe Raw to make my final touches. Okay, now in Adobe Raw again, I go to the top here and select the main menu. I'm going to go down here to Geometry and make sure that everything is, the verticals are vertical. So I'm going to try Automatic, vary that between that and Vertical, see which one I like better. I think in this case I'm going to go with Automatic. Looks fairly decent there. If it wasn't, I would go over here and use the last one, which is the Guided. But I don't think we need to do that in this case. Um, I'm going to mess with the white balance and fix that. I usually do that in another step, but you can wait to the end to do it as well. Usually I mess with it about twice anyway. All right, so I'm picking the different white areas around the trim. That looks more like what I've seen when I was there. And I'm going to take uh, the temperature because it's giving me a plus 11. I'm going to back off just a little bit. A little too yellow, but not bad. I'm going to take the brush tool and I'm going to turn up the exposure to maybe that plus 0 0.40 and uh, brighten up a little bit more that area farthest away from the camera. Um, let's see if there's any more I want to do there. Maybe turn that up just a little bit more now that I've already painted that on. All right, uh, get a new brush, take this out. I see one other thing I want to do right about here. It's a little yellow where I brought in that picture from underneath. So I'm going to paint with a negative four temperature. It's going to make it a little bit more blue instead of yellow. Raise the temperature, I mean the exposure just a little bit. Maybe brush that in here on the top. And it looks like it's a little on the magenta side, so back that off a tad. Now I'm being nitpicky. All right, go to a new brush. I see I want to get that far area a little bit more. It's driving me crazy. There we go. A little bit darker right there. Maybe down here. So what I'm just do going through is looking for any darker spots and fixing it. Now the elephant in the room is this bright spot there. So with a new brush, I'm going to reduce highlights. Maybe exposure just a tad and brush that in right in this area just to calm it down just a little bit. Now, I'm at 128% zoom level, so I'm going to go ahead and knock this down to 66%, which is roughly the way I'm going to deliver it. It would look about this size. Um, if you want to know what I resize my photos to for the MLS, I always go for a width of uh, 1,500 pixels and I just let the height take care of itself because it uh, does everything in proportion to each other and never had a complaint from it from any realtor whatsoever. I'm still not liking this area right here. So I'm going to grab another brush and I uh, think I'll go with a little bit more exposure and a little less of the warmness there because it looks a little yellow right there. Maybe a tad here. All right. So I think I'm good there and just add a little bit of vibrance if I want the colors to pop just a little bit more. And one other thing I just want to mention, uh, make sure you guys are using this from time to, to, from time, to time is this dehaze tool. Now I'm cranking it down. It looks terrible, but what it does is it uh, brings out a little bit more. It makes it a little crisper and a little, a little clear. It l really looks good if you add just a little bit of dehaze sometimes. I do it a lot when I'm outside for the outside of the home. And uh, anytime I have a picture that looks a little washed out on the inside, I will mess with the dehaze a little bit and it seems to fix it. The other one I mess around with when that happens is the blacks. So I take it to the negative and it kind of uh, makes it look less washed out if you do see that your photo does look that way. And I see my dog agrees. so. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next video.